Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Indian School of Physics. Guys, this is Nitin here and today I have come up with uh, the same amazing problem and the amazing solution of it as I promised. So you can see here, I gave this problem a few days back and uh, many of you have given uh, their responses so which was a good thing and uh, today also I will upload one uh, problem as you requested that I should give the problem statement uh, beforehand and then you will try and after two three days i will discuss this problem so i thought i will uh, use this for uh, one or two videos and we will see i'll uh, we will have a community poll also regarding the same so here is the problem statement uh, i have just uh, modified that uh, slightly uh, but it is the same problem the model of water wheel is uh, shown in the diagram on the rim of massless wheel of radius r a large number of n cells are evenly arranged when one of the cell passes uh, the topmost position a small load of mass m is dumped into it without any initial velocity with respect to ground so this is one point we have to notice and when when the cell when a cell is passing through the lowermost position the load falls out of it without any velocity relative to the wheel this is the second statement where we have to pay the attention all impacts of load and wheel are inelastic and there is no friction what will be the steady state angular velocity of the wheel after a long time so this was the data given uh, in the problem so i am using the same data so first i will use the standard uh, way of solving this uh, question using energy approach since uh, in the question they are asking us uh, steady state omega that means angular velocity has become constant in this case and uh, in this situation we can say energy wise whatever energy is entering into the system this energy must be leaving also right then only this omega can be constant otherwise omega will change so using that idea in the mind we can uh, approach this problem and a second approach can be since angular velocity is constant therefore the net torque on the wheel must be zero this will be the second approach and that is uh, where the trick lies and let's see how to apply this in uh, this question so first one is the standard solution so energy approach so we are assuming the steady state angular velocity as omega in this case all right then step one is loss in energy of leaving mass at the lowermost point so when this mass is leaving this system and it is leaving with the zero relative velocity with respect to wheel that means it is moving with the same velocity of r omega and this is the energy leaving the system all right this is the energy leaving the system if total number of shells are n so we can say in this half n by 2 are present in this half n by 2 are present so it is just uh, n by 2 and n by 2 plus 1 because the moment uh, one will enter here and one will be leaving this part so this number remains uh, same all the time as n by 2 now loss in energy of leaving mass simply i can say it is the kinetic energy of this so i am writing this part as e1 as half m uh, v tangential square that is uh, r omega whole square the second step is gain in gravitational potential energy during the fall so you can see the moment this mass is uh, entering here and it goes all the way from here to here and uh, then it is leaving like this all right so how much fall is coming in this uh, how much gain in uh, potential energy is coming simply i can write mg into 2r so mg into 2r now the most crucial part and uh, difficult part of this problem is energy loss at the topmost point this is uh, this is where uh, normally people will struggle so i'll just give you the brief idea of how exactly these things are happening so you can see the moment it will uh, fall here with zero velocity suddenly this uh, wheel is coming and these edges of wheel will hit the ball or hit the load and this is like inelastic collision and due to this inelastic collision you can say some loss in energy will take place here all right so we have to encounter that uh, loss in energy also so i'm just uh, making these two uh, <coughs> situation just before one particle hits uh, here 
and uh, just after that so what happens let's say this is moving with the uh, omega naught and this is moving with omega now remember uh, since omega is steady state omega we will definitely see that for large number of n omega naught omega values will be very very close very very close to each other so i am saying here let's say n by 2 shells are there we have already encountered or counted this part leaving that we have counted here so that's why i am writing n by 2 cells and here when we are adding one this is n by 2 plus 1 cell so that, that is already counted all right so overall there are n by 2 plus 1 uh, cells i'm taking one is which is just entering another one is just leaving so due to this let's see what is the small change fractional change in the omega values which will come due to this additional mass and in that process what will be the energy loss so i'll be using here the concept of angular momentum you can see here these are n by 2 all right these are n by 2 and uh, mass is m and velocity here is r omega for this so you can write m v r similarly here i can write and this uh, i have left already because it's a contribution i have checked so this will be equal to n by 2 plus 1 m r omega into r so from here you can see the two omegas we can uh, relate with each other and you can see here omega is equal to n by n plus 2 times omega naught for large number of n like in this problem it is given this is uh, 200 and this is 202 or 201 and 203 so these values are very much nearby and that is what we were expecting also because in steady state uh, that omega is assumed to be constant so these values we are uh, finding they are very nearby now if you look at this uh, element just before and just after here it's kinetic energy and here it's kinetic energy and that difference is the energy loss so e3 i am writing the energy before hitting and uh, another one is the energy just after all right so you can see here uh, in this part half m v square minus half the next mass in this uh, wheel will become n by 2 plus 1 m into v square when you take this difference simplify we are going to get uh, this value as uh, after simplification e3 as half mr square omega square n by n plus 2 but there we are dealing with omega so let's bring everything into omega so here for large n i'm uh, just approximating this value as half mr square omega square otherwise if you want to find more uh, accurate value we will go with this expression so in steady state you can say the energy loss which is happening in a cycle and that is equal to energy gain in a cycle so e1 plus e3 is equal to e2 when we substitute the values we are getting omega is equal to root 2g by r so this is going to be the right answer for this problem and uh, roughly it is 4.4 radian per second so guys please remember this here the correct solution if you want without any approximation then it will come with this value all right but here i want to find a numerical value and i'm taking that assumption that number is very very large then this is going to be the right answer now let's discuss the second method which is very very uh, easy and i'll say i i loved it because that was my first approach before seeing the uh, official solution of this problem you know, this, this is how i solved it and i was very happy this was uh, the trick so i'll just brief you what was my thought process while uh, using this solution you can see for large n we can treat this load as as if there is a semicircular wire mounted on this basically this is the wheel and this part continuous mass system i'm assuming for large n instead of dealing with the particle what i'm thinking is as if these are continuous masses since we need to find the final state uh, sta uh, steady state angular velocity therefore net torque must be zero on the wheel plus wire system this is what i have told you some time back and here you can see now at the lower most point load is leaving without any relative velocity therefore no 
force will be acting on the system due to ejected mass due to ejected mass it is v relative into dm by dt and it acts opposite to v relative all right i think variable mass systems you will remember whereas the at the topmost point load is falling with relative velocity with respect to wheel that means here a force will act on the wheel due to added mass which will provide the torque against the torque due to weight of semicircular part of the load you can see here all these masses are present here they will continuously provide torque which will uh, create the rotation in this so you can see here in this situation uh, the torque due to mg must be balanced by some other torque then only omega can be steady and in this case we are finding that due to this additional mass at the top bottom we don't have to think because uh, with the zero relative velocity it is leaving but at the top a non-zero relative velocity is there because r omega is the velocity of the wheel at that point where this uh, load will be landing and here it is zero so you can see in this case these two torque we have to equate or we can use corresponding angular impulses also whichever way it is easy so let's discuss here now here in the fbd i am showing the first particle because in the remaining particle this will become internal force of the system uh, so that will not come into picture we don't need to consider also but here i am separating the particle and uh, let's say for one particle mr omega should have been change in momentum should have been the impulse but cumulative momentum i'm writing so for all the loads i'm saying let's say this total mass is m itself i'm treating it as a wire and corresponding to the change in uh, linear momentum this j will be acting on this wheel all right now for semicircle i can write this n by 2 m instead of dealing with individual particle i'm just treating taking this uh, mass as total mass m and uh, i can read uh, relate this with the lambda lambda into pi r will become linear uh, using linear mass density so this conversion also i'll be using so from here you can say this j is mr omega magnitude wise all right so in steady state this j into r must be equal to impulse provided by mg and torque due to mg we can say here uh, it is different so you can see here this is r sin theta and this is dmg so dmg into r sin theta dmg this is dm into g into r sin theta 0 to pi we have to integrate so 0 to pi we are integrating and delta t time from here to here for this particle that is pi by omega all right now when i integrate this very easy integral 2 it will become so when i substitute the values here mr square omega this is equal to this is equal to here uh, you can see uh, lambda into pi r will become m and this will become gr by 2 gr by omega so let's cancel out m and m and i'm getting omega square is equal to 2 g by r or you can say omega is root of 2g by r so you can see this method is very very simple compared to the previous one just balance the torque which are acting one is due to added masses or removing masses and torque due to weight they must balance each other and uh, that's it so i hope you have enjoyed this uh, problem and its uh, solution so guys another important uh, announcement is this evolved batch for class 12 jee mains and advanced 2023 and it is starting tomorrow tomorrow we will be having orientation session at uh, 5:30 pm and uh, a very good team of an academy is going to handle this uh, uh, batch uh, anuj chauhan sir for maths uh, brijesh chandel sir for uh, physical chemistry sachin rana sir for organic and uh, piyush sir for uh, inorganic uh, chemistry and i'll be handling the physics of this batch so just those who want to complete their uh, syllabus of 12th class with us uh, can join this uh, batch and we will be doing the revision in parallel for 11th topics also all right and uh, yes so every day free of cost these uh, tests are happening 30 minutes 15 question and uh, you can use my code uh, nitin sir in order to enroll for this this is completely free of cost 
so that's it guys i hope you have enjoyed this solution if you want more such problems please leave a like share this video with others and if you want to subscribe my channel please subscribe it today you'll be getting another boom bomb problem thank you thanks for watching it